right, so we're always looking for ways to make our meatloaf better, and I've got one for you, bacon. Bacon makes everything better, right? So what we're gonna do, I see lots and lots of recipes where you take the bacon, you throw it on top of the meatloaf, you cook it off, bacon gets nice and crusty, oh, I love that. In fact, I've got one of those on my, uh, on my channel. Go ahead, check it out. What we're gonna do though here is put the bacon inside the meatloaf. I've got like a pound of bacon, we'll chop it up, cook it off, mix it in with the meat, that bacon flavor infuses throughout the whole thing in yummy deliciousness. I really want you to give it a try. Make sure, uh, make sure you leave a comment, let me know how it goes. I'm always curious, and um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, folks, so we're gonna go ahead and do some meatloaf, one of my favorites for the weekend meals. The uh, kids are around today. Say hi, Lizzie. Hi! So forgive any of the noise that you hear in the background. So the way I'm gonna do this one, we're gonna chop up our vegetables in a, uh, in a food processor. And I've got about a, um, a cup, cup and a half of carrots. I only had the baby carrots here, but obviously you can use uh, regular ones, peel them, chop them. I've got two onions. I've got a red bell pepper in there. Um, I've got about two cups of celery and four or five garlic cloves. And what I like about this is the food process processor chops them up so fine that you never see kind of big chunks of veggies in the, um, in the meatloaf, which may turn off said kids in there. So I got too much here, so I'm gonna do um, kind of a batch first, and then, uh, and then we'll come back and uh, do the rest. I'm just gonna put the lid on, and then do some pulses until it's pretty finely chopped. Okay, so you can see after just a few pulses, things are um, you know, chopped up, still pretty rough, but I think I've got room to add some more in. We're just going to keep doing that until we get them all nicely pureed. All right, there we go. I'm not, um, we're not exactly looking for a soup, right? There's still some pieces in there. Little chunks are okay. And we're going to go ahead and uh, cook this off now. Okay, so here we've got a large pan over high heat. We're going to add a good amount of olive oil to the pan. And then we've got our pot of veggies here, which I'm gonna add to the pan. And we're just gonna saute these down until they are um, kind of nice and tender. Probably gonna take about 25 minutes or so. Okay, so as our um, vegetables cook down here, um, there's gonna be a lot of water, and that water's gonna pool. We're looking for all that water to evaporate in addition to getting the vegetables soft. And as you cook, well, pieces like this one, if you can see it, you know, I'm not worried about those size, but there might be a couple big chunks. Here's a big chunk of celery. We can just take those, drop them off to the side, pull them out. It's really easy. It's not going to harm anything if you leave it in there. It'll be absolutely fine. You may just not want to bite into a big piece of celery in there. The other thing we're going to do is just add a couple good sized pinches of salt to it, and then we'll just continue to cook. Stir every once in a while, medium-low heat. Just make sure the uh, the veggies aren't burning to the bottom of the pan. All right, so after 20 minutes or so, you're going to notice the color is changing a little bit, and you're going to notice it drying out quite a bit. All that water, that moisture has evaporated away. The, uh, the veggies are soft, right? Um, and we're good to go. Um, so what we're going to do, we'll just kill the heat real quick. I've got a big, giant bowl here. This is where we're going to mix our meatloaf. And I'm going to let these vegetables cool off, and while they're cooling, I'm just going to rinse and wipe down this pan, and then uh, come back, we'll do some bacon. Okay, so here's our pan. I just rinsed it out. It's not very hot. It's kind of a cold pan, and this is a bunch of chopped up bacon. It's almost a full pound, probably 10 ounces of bacon or so. You can certainly use a full pound. Um, I'm not going to cook it all the way to where it's crisp, but I'm going to render it out a little bit, get some of that fat, get it kind of halfway cooked or so. And you're going to see, here's the, here's the shape of it, just nice little lardones there. Using a cold pan so we don't, um, you know, scorch or burn anything. Kind of medium heat. And this will probably take 15 or so minutes. All right, so these are our bacon. You can see there's still some fatty pieces on there, but I'm rendering it down mostly because if we put just the raw bacon in the meatloaf, look at all this bacon grease. Wow, it's super yummy. It's going to make our meatloaf. Um, you know, super, super greasy. 
So I'm just going to tip the pan here, collect that grease down towards the bottom, and then scoop out these lardones, put them on a um, set of paper towels to dry um, or to drain, get more of that oil off. And then this bacon is going to get incorporated with our meat and our vegetables and give us an awesome, awesome flavor. Okay, so our veggies are cooked off now, or cooled off now. We're going to add in our meat. I'm using, this is four pounds of beef. Now this is going to be enough for uh, at least two meat, meat loaves, maybe three. I tend to uh, make a couple. Eat one, cook and eat one, and then um, freeze the other ones raw and just uh, pop them in the... Um, Free in the oven when uh, oh, I'm out popping the oven when I want a meatloaf. Um, okay, so there's that was two pounds of pork, four pounds of beef. If you want to use other meats, turkey in there, all that, it's all good. I do like using a couple different kinds of meat um, as opposed to just one. This is all that bacon that we cooked off. We got to do some salt, a couple good, three, that was like three massive pinches. We're going to do black pepper. And actually, I'm going to probably put some more black pepper. Fresh ground off camera because it'll take quite a bit. And watching me grate pepper is a little boring. We're going to do, I'm going to call this a cup and a half to two cups of Italian breadcrumbs. And then it's just three eggs, just super lightly beaten. You don't even really need to beat them. They will, uh, they'll mix up just fine. And this, oh, I forgot, one more thing. Now, you can add spices, you can add kind of anything you want in here. This is pretty basic, except for the bacon. That's really going to be our main um, flavor in here. I'm going to throw a few dribbles of the Worcestershire sauce in there. This is our mix. Like I said, if you want to throw other spices in there, cumin, if you want to throw like peppers, chili peppers, um, that's really good in there. Obviously garlic powder, onion powder, all those things are good. Now you can see what I'm doing with this thing. It's kind of a giant pan. Best thing to do is get in there with your hands and just mix all of this together. You got to get it really well incorporated. It's probably going to take a good 10 minutes or so of me. I go out on the outside, kind of bring it in the center and push down and just rotate the pan around. Once I get all this mixed together, um, we're going to cook off a little taster. Okay, so we got our meatloaf mixed together, nice and homogenous, no big lumps of anything. But how do we know it tastes good? You don't want to cook an entire meatloaf and then realize, ah, doesn't have enough salt, doesn't have enough pepper, doesn't have enough breadcrumbs because it's too tough or anything like that. So I got a, uh, a little taster here, a little pan, everything's a little, right? We're going to throw it right on there. We're just going to cook it off, and then um, and we're going to try a bite, see if our meatloaf needs some more seasoning. All right, so here's my little tester ball, meatball, um, or meatloaf. And we're going to give it a try. We're tasting for texture and flavor. So texture, I think, is fine. If it's too um, too tough, I tend to add some, uh, meat, some uh, more breadcrumbs. But you're also tasting for seasoning. This one, I think, could use a good amount more salt, and a good amount more pepper. And then, we're gonna be good to go. We're gonna um, shape these up, and um, we're gonna cook one of them off. All right, so we're just gonna mix in that salt and pepper. And I think we've got enough meat here, meat mix for three meat loaves. And um, I go for the freeform method. I tend not to make them in a pan. Um, this way, it tend to get more crust on like all the meatloaf, which I think is delicious, as opposed to it just kind of steeping or boiling or steaming in a um, in a pan. So what we're gonna do. I've got three sheets of parchment parchment paper here lined up because I'm gonna do three meatloaves, and I'm going to um, I'm gonna freeze two of them. So I'm just gonna use my hand and separate out a good amount of the meat here, and form it into basically like a football shape. We're trying to get it, you know, no big folds or creases or anything like that. Nicely uniform, which is going to require you to kind of quickly move it around, go into a ball, and then lay down kind of right in the middle. 
of our first piece of parchment paper here, and then you can continue to shape it. Um, you're trying to get it kind of equal height, width, all around, so that it cooks as evenly as possible. And you can just kind of continue to form as you go there. Voila! If you need to, you know, again, attach the sides. You, don't, you just don't want a point, because if you get a point, it's going to be really overdone on that side. Um, I've got my parchment paper here. This will be one I freeze. So really, I just fold, fold the paper, fold the paper, and I'm going to come this way, wrap it up, and then I can throw it in a Ziploc bag. Okay? I'm going to do the other ones, and then we're going to come off and uh, cook the one we're going to eat tonight. All right, so I've had my meatloaf in the, uh, in the oven at 400 degrees. I put it in a preheated oven, and uh, it's been in there probably 40 minutes or so. I've got it up to 120 degrees. you got to bring it with the pork up to 160. Uh, see all that juice in there? That's why you don't like poke it 100 times. You try and do it as minimum as a time, as little as possible. I mean, it's probably going to take a total of about an hour and 10 minutes or so. All right, so we just popped it out of the oven, nice and firm. That's one way you can tell. Obviously, meat thermometer as well. You want that center at one, um, you know, 158, 155 will do because the carryover temperature will make it 160. You gotta let it rest for at least uh, 15 minutes or so before we slice into it. You'll see the paper, um, you know, protected um, the, the uh, what do you call that? The tray, so it'll be easier to clean up. No problems. You gotta let it rest, and we'll slice this baby up. All right, so we've got our meatloaf now rested. We're gonna go ahead and slice it up. You can see, even after that rest, it's still nice and warm. I actually like using a serrated knife for this if you've got a um, uh, electric knife. Those work beautifully as well. And if you want to go ahead and throw your tomato sauce on there, go ahead, do it. I actually like a, um, a little mushroom sauce right here, which I use just a little bit of mushroom, some wine, some stock. It is absolutely awesome. Hope you enjoy this bacon meatloaf, and I will see you next time on No Respiratory Fire. So, bacon in the meatloaf. One of my favorites, this was great. Even my family loved it, and they sometimes don't even touch the bacon, but I hit it from them, and they loved it. Go ahead, give it a try. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Check out these other links, and uh, let me know how it went in the comments. I'll see you next time on No Respiratory Choir.